Hey, what's going on guys? Tom here and today, sorry, Let's see who this is. It's a client. Wanna talk about the shoot? Just kidding. It's literally never happened in the history of photography and it never will. Let's talk about zooms. I know that was a silly little intro, but it's you know based on years of seeing comments and self-proclaimed purists saying that you have to shoot on a prime lens, otherwise you're not a real photographer and all this nonsense. I'm not really sure like what the beef is with a zoom lens. I personally think they're great. They have tons of applications from weddings to sports. There's just thousands of photographers all over the world that probably couldn't do their job without a zoom lens. Personally, for product photography, it's been great for me, and I'm gonna explain the pros and cons in a bit, but right now I wanted to show you guys kind of, this is my two lens system, basically. So this is my Canon 5DSR, it's tethered because never tether never comes off pretty much, and that's the newest 24 to 70 from Canon, and this is the 100 millimeter macro L from Canon. But how I got back to this, because I was led astray for a minute, but I'm back <laughs> mostly on the zoom lens. I had a 24 to 70, the OG one, back when I had the first 5D, and then the 5D2, and then the 5D3. I awkwardly switched to Nikon for a few years with a D800 because I wanted more resolution, and it was fine, but I just, I couldn't take it anymore. Everything was backwards, so I went back to Canon. I got my 5 DSR. I think it was 2017, and at that point I was still shooting a decent amount of portraiture, so I wanted the shallow depth of field, and I also wanted the camera to be a little bit lighter when I was hand-holding it, so I got, you know, I got a bunch of primes. I could do a whole video on these guys, but yeah, I got some Sigma and some Tamron glass. I just wanted that shallow depth of field that you can't get with a zoom lens. However, things escalated over the course of a year of carrying all these prime lenses around, and I can explain. If I'm shooting in my studio, it's no big deal. I can swap the lenses, they stay in a drawer, everything is easy. But a lot of the times I'm shooting at a client's studio or space, office, location, etc., and I have to load up my camera bag, I gotta get on the subway. It's heavy, you know? You're carrying this bag for a half an hour, maybe an hour, whatever. In the summer, it's hot, it's heavy, it's, it's it's, you know, it can be very frustrating. I have a bad back, so these are things that I have to take into consideration. Honestly, it's not the end of the world carrying a few extra lenses. If I had to do it, of course I would do it, but I knew that I got by for eight years or so, or seven years with a zoom lens, and I had no issues. So after about a year of carrying a 35, a 50, an 85, and a 100, because I wanted to make sure I had the whole focal range covered, I just started to get frustrated because a lot of times on set now with social media, clients are they're asking for a lot of shots. So you have to move quickly and switching lenses all the time can just get annoying. There's just there's just different pros and cons to zoom lenses versus prime lenses, but in my experience with commercial product photography, a 24 to 70 is just super helpful. You can leave the lens on most of the day unless you're shooting like a texture for cosmetics or if you have to get super tight on something then you switch to the 100 but i pretty much can go to any job with just these two lenses and i have no problems so one of the instances where the zoom lens is helpful is leaving it on the camera and not having to switch it and let dust get inside the camera this is a big deal when shooting cosmetics because there is just glitter mist in the air sometimes and it's so small it's smaller than actual glitter it's just like the dust of it in the air that stuff gets in your camera and it can be very frustrating you have to spend money to get the camera cleaned 
and then you don't have a camera for a few days, it's not a good situation. Also, one of the big pros for me with a zoom lens is if I have a scene that I'm, you know, I'm zoomed in at 50 millimeters, but I just need a little more room, I can zoom out to 45, and I don't have to jump all the way to 35 and then have like a huge change and have too much room all around the frame and have to move the camera stand down or move the tripod down. I'm shooting almost everything on a tripod, by the way, or a camera stand, so take that into consideration too, as most product photographers are, I would assume. So yeah, being able to just kind of zoom out just a hair instead of switching to a totally different focal length is a huge, huge help. Not to mention it, when you think about it, you have 24, 35, 50, and 70 millimeters on here. It's almost like having four lenses in one. I know 70 is not the same as 85, but it is something in between 50 and 100, which I find myself shooting 70 millimeters pretty often, to be honest. A lot of times for into shots to compress it, but not have the same aggressive compression as a 100 millimeter macro, the 70 does a really nice job for me. One thing I did want to mention is when I did decide to get the zoom lens, I loved my Sigma uh, prime lenses so much that I decided I'm going to get this 24 to 105. It's got stabilization. So if I want to shoot handheld, I'll be good to go. And it was the single biggest mistake lens purchase that I've ever made. This lens is absolutely horrific for product photography. I was on a job and I noticed that the image was jumping a little bit because I'm shooting all tethered as well so every all the product shoots I'm doing everything is tethered pretty much every shoot I'm doing is tethered anyway but we had the grid lines up and you can see the 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 logo just moving a little bit and I'm just like what is going on I thought the floor was shaking even though I'd shot there a ton of times before I've never had an issue and then I realized something's going on with this lens it was the first week that I had had it and I didn't have time to do any testing. Plus I figured it's Sigma, it's gonna be great. I have Sigma lenses already. I get on Google and I see a photographer named Stefan Jan, who apparently has been shooting cars for like 20 years. This was on Petapixel. He had the same issue. He had to shoot like 12 shots of a Ferrari in six hours or something insane. So time is of the essence. He was trying to get this stuff done and he noticed that the logo, the Ferrari logo is like bouncing around in the frame and you just, you, you just freak out because you're like, this is, this is not good. Especially with doing product photography, we're shooting plates, which is, if you're not familiar with that term, we're shooting a lot of different exposures and we're compositing them. So we get a shot for the shadows, we get a shot for the metal, etc. So when you're compositing all this stuff, if things are bouncing around, they're going to be out of registration, which if you're doing the retouching yourself, you're going to be really upset with yourself. And if someone else is doing it, you're going to really bump someone else out. So it's something that you have to consider. As soon as I saw this article from Stefan Jan online, I knew that it was the lens. Essentially what the issue is, is even though it has an off switch, the magnet that holds the element in place never really stops working. When the camera falls asleep, or turns off, it'll drop, but then it could just start floating and just change positions. So that's one lens you wanna super, super avoid is the Sigma 24 to 105. You guys need to figure that out, Sigma. That thing is a mess. But for portraits and stuff, it's probably great. Anyway, after that, I decided this is it. I'm getting the 24 to 70 L lens from Canon, the new version, the two. It's been a dream, honestly. It was like, I think 1600 bucks on sale. I think it's like 1700 retail. If again, if you're shooting product photography and you do the math, you have four lenses in one pretty much. So you're saving a ton of money. You're really helping yourself with your back if you only have one lens, if you don't even need the macro lens and you can just get by with just the zoom lens, you're basically, you have one lens in a bag. It's just so much easier on your back. If you're out shooting on a location, this is a tremendous, just a lifesaver. You, you don't have to, if you have no assistant with you and you have to carry your camera bag, which happens all the time, it's just so easy. And you're not gonna be dying thinking about how tired and hot you are all day because you're carrying the camera and the lens. You're not even gonna have the weight in your backpack or your camera bag. So it's just so much easier. And especially who wants to be changing lenses in the street? It's like, it's a mess. But again, there's applications for prime lenses. I'm not saying you should not own any prime lenses. Personally, I have zoom and primes and when they're appropriate, I use the specific lens for the job. It's just having the right tool for the job. But 
if you can make your life easier and shoot with a zoom lens, no one will care. Your client will not care. I promise you. They just want the picture to be in focus. They want it to look good and they just want their assets delivered properly. They don't care if you shot it on a prime lens or a zoom lens. They have no interest in the details of that. They just want it to look good. So one of the big differences is that the 24 to 70 has an f 2.8 aperture, which is obviously not as fast as a 1.4 prime. But in my experience, I've been shooting commercial product work for over 10 years now. I don't think I've ever even shot wider than 2.8. I might have maybe less than five times. I honestly can't, I can't recall. People want their products super sharp. I probably don't even shoot more open than 5.6 a lot of times because I'm shooting top down lay downs, flat lays. I'll be shooting at F8 because we wanna get the entire product in focus and the background can be in focus too. So people just want their images to look sharp and one, one four is not really gonna do that for you. But there, again, there are applications where people do want maybe some artistic something going on. But for the most part, I'm never shooting more open than 2.8. Some people might think that no stabilization on this 24 to 70 is a con, but in my opinion, it's a pro because I'm shooting on a camera stand, a Foba or Manfrotto, a tripod, whatever. I literally almost never, almost never shoot handheld for product stuff because we're getting it framed up we're making little tweaks and stuff so we want to keep the camera in the same exact spot i want the highlights to be consistent so i'm just locking it off and i'm good to go so not having the stabilization a will save you money and b it's less bulky and heavy so that's also a pro for me one of the other major frustrations is when you have the camera 10 feet or nine feet up on a phoba stand and extended boomed out all the way over the set you have to get on a ladder and you gotta you know, balance on your tippy toes and basically risk falling through the entire set and destroying everything and probably ending up in the hospital. It's like, why do you need to do that to yourself? All you have to do is just give a, give a little zoom lens a little twist and then you're good to go. You don't need to be switching lenses, you know, doing a circus act. It's just, it, after a year of doing that, it just was too much. So I just went back to the zoom lens and just really, really had a better time on set and didn't end up in the hospital. Huge plus. So do you need to buy the Canon 24 to 70 L version two and spend all this money? You don't have to. I've been doing this a long time and I wanna have the best lenses and the best gear and this one is the best one for me. But if you're on a budget, if you're just starting out, I would recommend checking out some cheaper lenses, maybe get something used, try eBay, try keh.com, but more importantly, go to borrow lenses or lens rentals and just rent some lenses and just see what works for you. In my experience, the cheaper lenses have more chromatic aberration, which is why I like this lens better. It's just been really good for me. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it informative and you know maybe even entertaining, but if you liked it, please subscribe and like and all that jazz and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.